Hi. Good. Welcome to Nomads. My name's Finn. Maybe I can show you around. Here yeah, we sell a range of uh, goods from all around the world actually. A lot of jewellery, a lot of uh, brass statues which you can see around the shop of uh, various deities and gods and buddhas and whatnot. Um, I love those. Ganesh on a swing. Well it all started back in the late 70s when um, I went to Afghanistan and India and fell in love with that part of the world. I think it was a love of travelling that I'd got in my blood. Um, my great, my grandfather was a missionary doctor in China and also an explorer in Tibet and uh, <laughs> that love of travelling and discovering the world seems to have got into me and, and I just had to go and look for myself and that's how I found my way to Afghanistan. We had a stall on the market. We actually kept that stall going for about 25 years. We don't have it anymore. We've now given that up and we're just concentrating on the shop. But I saw a way of returning by bringing things back and selling them and then with the proceeds going back on my travels again. So that's how it really Well, let's take a look downstairs because there's plenty to see down there. part of the shop at the bottom of the stairs. As you can see, we've got a, quite a collection of Afghan rugs and kilims. Kilims are, is our um, flat ways of rugs, uh, mainly tribal from that part of the world, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, and some of the furniture that comes from that, those countries as well. You can see down here this wooden furniture. That's from the Kingdom of Swat, which is up in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan. It's now uh, pretty well been bombed to bits by the Americans because uh, of the Taliban activity in that area. So this, these kind of artifacts are they're getting harder and harder to, to find in this country and harder and harder to go and get in that country as well just because of the new that's going on. There's a lot of destruction that's happened in the last um, decade or so. Yeah, definitely. In traditional Islamic culture, when they're making rugs, they, they always leave, they always make a, a one little flaw in the rugs that they make. Um, the belief behind this is that only Allah is perfect and so this is this is shown up in that they can't make a perfect rug. To those people who don't know what they are, it could just be a pestle and mortar, but when you pick them up, they actually come to life. In this country they're used in ceremonies, they're also used by quite, we get quite a lot of yoga teachers and Tai Chi enthusiasts who like to begin and end their session by playing a singing bowl. So they're used for meditation, relaxation, regeneration, healing. People feel like the, the energy that's given off by the, the sound affects the energies in the human aura, so it's all good stuff. Last time I was in Kathmandu, um, I've been told about this lady, and her name is, I always find it hard to pronounce, is Annie Choyindolma, and she's actually a Tibetan nun, 
who's taken it upon herself to set up a, a nunnery in the pool. Now, there's plenty of monasteries, Tibetan monasteries, in that country. Nunneries are slightly, well, basically, if there's any education to be had, it's, it's uh, the men that get the first chance of having that. And so she set up this nun nunnery to give girls and women the opportunity to study and uh, basically have the, the sort of education that in the past has only been possible for, for the men. And I went to visit the nunnery and was so impressed by the work that she was doing that I felt like I wanted nomads to support that work in some way, and uh, which is what we're doing by um, basically the sale, sale of these um, shawls and scarves over here. So, amazing lady with uh, great vision for the, the girls and the women of Nepal and uh, we're very eager to support that. So we're actually putting up this exhibition of photographs that uh, I took in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan about 10 years ago. It was before all the troubles, the people there are so welcoming, so wonderful in so many ways actually, they're, they're a very proud people tribal, they have a generosity which, considering it's one of the poorest areas of the world, it, it, it's amazing. It's a, a real experience to go there. You can have a look <laughs> if you want to. Um, we had another exhibition of photographs up in the shop which was basically photographs taken by my grandfather. My grandfather was a missionary doctor in China in the 1920s. He was invited to go mapping into the um, parts of Tibet that hadn't been discovered yet and he went with a General George Pereira and all his trip was uh, documented with photographs that he took. There was um, in King's College Chapel there was uh, sand mandala pictures being created by Tibetan monks there was also Tibetan dancing in the corn exchange. So there was a whole week of different festivities all to do with Tibet. And at the end of the week, the, the, the telephone rang and, and a voice on the other end said that it was somebody from Tibet House in London and uh, would I like to take the photographs and uh, show them to His Holiness the Dalai Lama when he came to Oxford a week later? And of course the answer was yes. I don't, I don't think I'll ever forget it, the, the, um, the energy and the essence of uh, the Dalai Lama was so powerful that uh, I just felt bathed in, a, in an amazing uh, feeling of just real peace and uh, real compassion and true love actually. The name Nomads is, um, fits with a kind of way of life really. I, I, I like the idea of um, the nomad way of uh, moving from one place to another and, and finding the place that works best and uh, that's how we found our way here and it, yeah it fits. Plus we get lots of interesting characters wandering in and uh, they're often quite nomadic as well. Um, yeah. It's not a really a preference, but I do enjoy discovering new places and I do very much enjoy travelling into remote parts of the world. So um, being able to go out and then come back, that's, uh, that works well for me. I've got a, a, a family of uh, three daughters and one granddaughter and a dog. I don't think I really want to move. Having this shop as a reason for doing that is even better. But I may as well try and catch the wind